This position is going to work on someone who has a scoliotic curve trying to offset the shift of the shoulders to one side. Um, a couple things to pay attention to when you go through this position is that you always want to lie on the side of the spine that is concave or there's an arch in. Um, and the opposite side will typically have a hump in the ribs. So when you bend forward, if you want to know which side you should do, if you have someone stand behind you, on one side of your back will see a prominence, like your ribs sticking out on that side. That's the rib hump side. Typically the other side is where you're going to be caved in. You never lie on the side where the rib hump is. So this is something that you would just do on that side where you are caving in. So if we pretend that for me I'm caving in more on this left side is my concave side or I'll if someone looked at me from behind, they may see an indent on that side. That's where I'm going to lay. So laying down, I want that side down. Um, and ideally, um, the more that my body is erect, the better. But one major concern, and you'll see this when I face the other way, is I don't want to see my lower back go into a deep arch position. So I'll show it face here, and then I'll show you facing the other way. I want to position this uh, arm on the bottom side underneath my head as a pillow. If it's too uncomfortable, I can put a, you know, a pillow here. And I want this arm to be as far overhead as possible, so it is lengthening the side of my body that I'm laying on. So I always start off having them work into the arm overhead position first. If there's any pinching on the top of the shoulder, they want to back off just shy of that. If the arm doesn't land under the head, maybe it's all the way out here, obviously a pillow would be necessary. Now next, I want to take my top leg, and I want to try and get it behind me as much as possible. But at the same time, as I'm taking my leg behind me, I don't want to go so far that I feel like my back is arching. So just to show you on the other side, as I'm laying here, right? I'm gonna try and bring that straight leg behind me as far as I can, but if I go too far, my back is gonna to want to fall into this arch position. I want to make sure that I can still maintain some abdominal tension and keep my lower back flat. So as I take that top leg behind me, I have my bottom knee bent a little go as far back as I can comfortably, still keeping maybe a little tension in my stomach and no sway or pain in my back. If this hurts, I may start off well short of it. So beginning in this position, this lengthens that concave side. I want to begin with some breathing. So I take my hand out onto my, uh, just below my rib cage. And as I inhale, I want to feel myself press outward into my hand. And more so than even this top hand, I want to feel like this area is pressing into the table as I inhale, right? So you'll be able to see this hand. If I press down, it will elevate or laterally expand. Then as I exhale, it will collapse back down. So this breathing is especially important, trying to push air into those ribs on the bottom side. As slow and controlled as I can. I like to start with anywhere in the five to 10 breaths, really trying to focus on pressing that lower lateral aspect of my abdomen into the surface of my body. Next, I want to try and create some type of isometric tension to try and engage my muscles and hopefully this more elongated stretch position to get a little bit more of a lasting effect, right? So usually what I'll have people do is I always start with tension in my lower abdomen, kind of pulling my pelvis underneath me a little bit, thinking about pulling the front rim of my pelvis upward. And then once I can do that, I kind of add different pieces of pressure. Now, ideally I would have this hand, you know, like I said, on the floor, I'm on a bed. Tension in my stomach, and I may start with pressing my bottom elbow or my bottom hand down into the table or down into the floor. If that's fine, a lot of times I like to take some type of cushion in front of a person so that they have something to put their arm on in front. And then they'll once again press down into this top hand first after they tense their stomach and press into this top hand as well. If that's fine, I'll go from here to here, then I'll even press into my straight leg. And then I may also add in a press of my bottom knee. So really as I'm doing this, I'm just tensing my body, right? I'm just creating an isometric press just to engage muscles in this strange position that my body's never in. And I try to do it in a ramping up way, similar to the way that the Schroth technique is taught. So after doing some of the breathing, I will kind of hold this stomach first, bottom arm pressure, top arm, bottom knee, top, and I'm, I'm just pressing down into the floor and I'm gonna hold for two seconds and relax for two seconds. Then I may try four seconds 
and relax. And I keep ramping up six, eight, 10, and 12 is typically where um, she instructs to stop. And that would be the sequence I would go through, followed by once again, the breathing that I did before. Um, so really trying to elongate this bottom side, arm as far overhead, um, and then also trying to pull from the top, elongating my top leg as far as I can. Even the bottom leg, right, I'll start off with a flex because that'll allow my lower back to flatten. But if, uh, if that's fine, ultimately I even want to try and straighten that bottom leg out so I'm in kind of a scissor position. But I'll usually always start here so there's less likelihood of the lower back arching. 